everybody. Hello, OA, PDI, James, Eternal Magician, and Ji-chan. I'm doing just fine. Oh my god, I have been thinking of Umi Neko for so long, you guys. I can't... Oh, I really just want to keep playing it. Oh my god, you have no idea. I already love this story so much, you guys. Ugh. Like, seriously. I really want to believe in Beatrice so much. I love her so much, seriously. Hello, Pika Blue. Hello, Beatrice. Welcome to the stream. Oh my god, can you guys hear me okay? I just, seriously. I just love everything about this story so far. I just, I can't wait. Last time, Beatrice, uh, the R. Beatrice, and uh, Battler, like, he kind of explained to her what he didn't like about, you know, what she was doing. Exactly. Exactly, James. If I had infinite internet and that sleeping thing from Zaconia where you didn't have to sleep, then exactly. Jean, yes, not as much as Butler does. Oh my god, I just. And how about the game volume? Can you hear the seagulls just fine? And Butler was basically just. He was disappointed in Beatrice for just killing so brutally, which is really interesting because he was not disappointed in the fact that she was killing. He's like. Well, yeah, that's the whole point of the game, you know, to kill people, you kill people, and then I figure out whether it can only have been done by magic. Like, it's that I find so interesting. Like, Battler isn't even phased by the idea of murder of his own family anymore. Like, he doesn't even care about, like, that. that is so interesting. He just wants to win in the game against Beatrice. It's like, I'm trying to figure out where exactly Battler is right now. This is still episode one, Battler. It's like, but then what happened to the episode two, Battler? Are like the Battlers fusing or something? Like, I, I don't know what's going on. Hello, Ruka. Welcome to the stream. Oh my God, Ji-chan. If I, if I could ever do that, I, oh my god, if I could ever start a stream recap with, okay, so Beatrice and Battler finally started making out last night. If I could ever say that truthfully, oh my god. Exactly, Ruka, it's just going to be me uh, making kettle noises. Like the last time on Umi Neko, jeez, ah, like that, exactly. <laughs> oh my god. And also, Beatrice was kind of, like, they were both kind of in denial about how they felt about each other. And it was, oh my god. I wasn't expecting things to move this quickly. And also, yeah, Eva, Eva Beatrice, Eva Tris, it's her turn to try to separate the adults. Yeah, until I could say that in red. Exactly. Ji Chan. So, and uh, kill everybody for the next couple of Twilights until there's only five remaining. She already told them pretty much that it's going to be, she's going to spare the real Eva as well as Hideyoshi and George. I wonder who else is going to be spared. Probably Battler. And I don't know who the fifth person would be. I'm guessing... Jessica, maybe. Because the kids don't usually die. And, uh, yeah. I'm guessing it'll be Jessica since... Especially since uh, she has all the adults together. So... Aside from Eva and uh, Hideyoshi, who are conveniently tucked away, so... Oh my god, you know what, you guys? I can't wait. Let's get back into it. Seriously, let's just get back into... Umi
Now I have to actually see where my save is. Yep, second one, because we ours all our save files got filled up. I'm sorry, I just want to check. Oh my god, Peekaboo, you are absolutely right. The kids have never been less relevant. Uh, basically, to the story. Especially, like, has the battler who's actually in the inside the uh, game, he's barely said anything at all. We haven't even seen things from his perspective. Like, it's incredible. Like, this story has been almost, uh, episode three, has been told almost entirely from the perspective of Beatrice and uh, uh, Battler in the meta world, the 5D land. I just, um, that is really fascinating. And I wonder where that's headed for episode four. All right, anyway, uh, let's start the story. Certainly, the body cannot last with nothing more than a small breakfast, but... Of course, we understand. Still, as time passes, it'll get darker, darker, yet darker out. It's probably at its brightest right now. It's the most convenient time. Only about an hour has passed since Rosa-san was attacked. This is simply too reckless! Oh god, I can't wait, Chi-chan. It was only natural that Natsuki was yelling about recklessness. After all, Rudolph had said he was going to the mansion to get food. And whenever you're in a horror movie, which is basically what they're in, uh, you never ever just separate from the group. Ever. Because you're dead. You're basically dead. Unless you're the main character. Certainly, on top of their fatigue, their hunger was tormenting them. In the beginning, a mild level of hunger had just been what they needed to fight off drowsiness. You know what? They should all go as a group. They can't stop them all. Jeez. Uh, however, it just now made their minds hazy, since it was only still only midday, and their bodies felt like they were reaching their limits. The thought of going to the kitchen in the mansion and bringing back some food certainly was attractive. I am opposed to this. It may be a little rough, but we definitely shouldn't leave this place. Don't worry about us. But it would pain my heart to keep the children hungry. I must be responsible as a parent. It will, Joseph. By the way, welcome to the stream. I'm planning to go through. I am completely blind to the whole story. And, uh, yes. <laughs> now that father is dead, you are the Ushiromiya family head. It is not permissible for you to take on such danger. So, ne. You're right. It's like Natsuhi san says. Kraus san wa leader to shite koko ni nokoru beki ne. Kraus san, you should remain here as our leader. Nara, dare ga yasuki e ikun da ne? Then who will go to the mansion? Ore to Kirie, ato Hideyoshi ni san no san nin de ikou to omou. I think it should be Kirie and me. Hideyoshi-san, too. Hideyoshi-san and I have guns. I got my boomstick right here. Hoo-ah. They shouldn't be able to lay a hand on us that easily. Unless they got some godlike magical powers. 
Who would the halt of that? Rosa san mo jiu o motte imashita ga osoaremashita. Rosa san also had a gun, but she was also attacked. You idiot. Kiken dewa arimasen ka? Would it be dangerous? Rosa tachi no yousu o tashikame ni deta toki, jiu o motte ita ga, ore wa hitori datta. When I went out to check on Rosa and Marichan, I had a gun, but I was alone. And yet, I wasn't attacked. Maybe they'll be cautious if their opponent is a man. I just realized. Um, uh, Evatris could have done that thing of, um, like, yo, you do in Skyrim, where if you stealth kill somebody and then. Some other one of one other enemy comes running over, and they're like, "No, who could have done this? No, no!" And then, and then, like after a while, they just go back on patrol. Like nothing. She could have just waited for everybody come come out one by one and try to check the bodies, and just sniped them from far away like that. I'm sorry. I just had that horribly macabre thought. Jeez. <laughs> We'll have two men. And even two guns. And those two will act as guards, and I'll transport our cargo using a card. I'll be like regular Team Fortress 2 mission. I believe the situation will be significantly different than it was for Rosasan. I call dibs on the engineer. If you're counting on me because I'm a man, I'm, I'd be happy to help. I call heavy. I may not look it, but I'm built up pretty strong from pushing food stands around. Leave the heavy lifting to me! Oh my god! Jeez! Wow! Okay. You man can devote yourselves to garden. There's a folding cart in the servant room. And using that, I should be able to handle carrying the food pretty well. Of course, we'll be careful. And if we can succeed in this adventure just once, then there won't be any need for us to take risks again. Is there any way I can get you to rethink this? It may be painful for everyone to deal with empty stomachs, but even so, we do not know what is happening outside now. We'll take care. And Eva's pretty, feeling pretty darn bad right now. We can't let her stay hungry. Okay, so since Hideyoshi is going with them, I think that Hideyoshi's group is probably going to be safe. But uh, Natsuhi, Kraus, and Nanjo are probably going to die uh, while that while they're going to get food. That's what I think is going to happen anyway. If her stomach's empty, she can't take a medicine. I have to go out for Eva's sake as well. God, Hideyoshi is just the man. I can see where George got all his best qualities. Seriously. Hideyoshi is so fucking awesome. He is such a loving and devoted husband. My god. He is just amazing, seriously. George, he... I can see so much of him in George. My god, Shannon? Uh, such, such a catch. 
And Eva for that matter as well. How was Eva? Looks like she's finally gone to sleep. She has a high fever. If we just live a bit for a while. You can't just stand still when it comes to your wife's health. Understood. I'll give you permission to go outside. Then we'll take a little trip there and back. A speed contest! Canned food's okay, right? You at least have a can opener here, don't you? Well, if they don't, you can just take one from the kitchen when you're getting the food. Hi. Yes. We have a can opener and a bottle opener. There's one running water in the guest house, so we won't need anything to drink. Also, they have all those, those that alcohol in the back right there. We need to get ten people's worth, so no being picky about what you get. All right! Why we dash out and bring it back quickly? There's no time to open umbrellas. See you, Aniki. I'll just you look after this place. Take care. Under normal circumstances, I'd want to go too. Being a man, I despise how this title of the oldest brother prevents me from lending a hand in an emergency like this. <laughs> this is about the only time we get to show off. Sit back and take it easy every once in a while, Aniki. Okay, Natsuhi-san. Wait here and get some towels ready or something. We aren't using umbrellas, so we'll be soaked to the bone when we get back. Uh, understood. Take care. Rudolph, Kirie, and Hideyoshi, each leaving their own brave words behind, left the lobby. Yeah, they're all gonna live, I think. For now, at least. Compared to the time Rosa and Maria had gone outside, the winds were much stronger. Rudolph's group of three people jogged through the rose garden without umbrellas, holding their guns in a folded cart. If everything had been still and quiet, without the wind and rain, they probably would have kept their ears open and moved with caution. But in this rain, even if some suspicious person was hiding nearby, it would be difficult to notice them. Because of that, it had been Rudolph's plan instead to instead dash through the dangerous area. If there was a chance that their opponent was equipped with a gun, then walking slowly with their guard up would only make them targets. Taking switch a swift action was probably the correct choice. <laughs> the rose garden! <laughs> It feels like we're just asking to be attacked. Oh, please let nobody come out of there!
even as Rudolph and Hideyoshi continued to run. They looked around restlessly, vigilant of their surroundings. Rosa and Maria's deaths had not been caused by a projectile weapon. However, it was easy to suspect that the servants had been killed in such a manner. Will they come flying out of the dark? Will they take careful aim and snipe from the shadows? Either way, they couldn't relax their tension even for an instant. But even so, when they reached the overhang in front of the entrance to the mansion and escaped the reach of the raindrops, they felt themselves breathing a sigh of relief. No problem for the first step. Unlike how it was for Rosa Song. Maybe they can't get, can't, can't get their hands on us easily. I'd like to believe that. Kiryu, unlock the door while we keep lookout. Sure. SP が二人もついたお屋敷に帰宅だなんて、実にエグゼクティブな気分よ。A return at home to the mansion with a pair of SPs makes me feel just like an executive. Well, isn't she? Isn't she an executive though? <laughs> <laughs> If we had a welcoming party of servants with a red carpet, it would be perfect. <laughs> a welcoming party, huh? You never know. Be careful. This might turn into goddamn doom in a second. Time to blast up some lesser demons. Oh please, Rudolph. You and your imagination. Like this place will be ever taken over by lesser demons. <laughs> it's possible, Hideyoshi. It's possible. Yeah, sure. Whatever. As the two cautiously surveyed their surroundings, Kiri unlocked the entrance with the master key she had been given. It's open. Hideyoshi-san! Could you take the front? I'll keep an eye on the rear. Eh, Kirie? Wink, wink. Nudge, nudge. Oh, Rudolph, now's hardly the time. Understood. Kirie-san, try not to move from my shadow. Okay, let's break in! Rear guard, roger that! Cover it! Oh man. Even in a situation like this, you're just playing around, aren't you? Give it up, that's how men are. Seriously, though, that stench is awful. Interesting. Huh. There's a stench in the mansion? Oh, hello, Doi. Welcome to the stream. No, I started at the normal time. Uh, yeah, no, I, I started at the normal time, Doi. That was a slightly later, actually. A couple of minutes later. Did you have daylight savings or something, Doi? Oh my god, oh wait, you said the exact same thing, jeez. Okay. It felt like the air in the mansion was stagnant with a gloomy silence. And on top of that, it was still thick with the stench from Kinzo's burnt corpse in the boiler room. And they were struck with an uncontrollable desire to leave the mansion. Zimple, 
No problems in the front. Just a short dodge to the kitchen. Let's finish this quickly and head home. This suit's gonna get fumigated with dead stench. The three of them dash towards the kitchen. Oh, really? They're being gone after. I'm surprised. She's gonna go after them? Didn't she say she would leave Hideyoshi alone? Interesting. Oh, boy. Eva is gonna be really pissed off if she kills Hideyoshi. After they disappeared from the entrance hall, the new witch appeared there. They were lured out just as planned. Just as planned, they got caught in my trap. The witch grinned. Thinking about it now, no matter how unbearable their hunger had grown, it hadn't even been a few hours since Rosa and Maria had been attacked and had lost their lives. In that case, why they needed to recklessly leave the guest house? Until that question could be dealt, dealt with, the only answer was that they had been called out by the witch's magic. What reckless people! They'll never leave this mansion alive! You bitch, why are you breaking your promise to Eva? Ugh. Seal yourself, lock. Seal yourself, mansion. The instant she reclaimed that. The mansion was sealed off into a separate world. Unless her barrier was undone. No longer would anyone be able to exit this mansion or enter it. Spectacular! To think that even though barely half a day has passed since you succeeded the Endless Witch, you can use magic this well. That talent surprises me. It's almost as though you were born a witch. Well, I have been a witch since the time of my birth. Who taught you how to blink? That's what's being, what using magic is like for me. <clears throat> uh, what a fearsome person. The witch's face twisted with brutality. She just couldn't help looking forward to toying with someone else's life again. Are we going to have a fight between her and our Beato? Beato? That would be an incredible way to end it. Oh boy. That would be a really interesting finale for episode 3. It is. It is. How many breads have you eaten in your life? Exactly. It's like... <laughs> and then Jojo was like, What do you mean bread? Do you mean slices of bread? Like, or loaves of bread? Like, I'm confused because if it's one, it's a lot less than the other. It's like, <laughs> I would think that he would say that in, in response. <laughs> like the Team Four Star video. Well then. <laughs> <laughs> ah! 
ルドルフとキリエなわけだけどどんな残酷な殺し方をしてやろうかしら First up is Rudolph and Kyrie. But in what cruel way should I kill them? If you don't mind me saying, Sendai Sama Yori, Fusio na Zanko Kunar Satsuna Yua, Shikairu Yo Goshijo Tamawat de Orimas. Your predecessor Sama has left instructions that you are to restrain yourself from committing murders of unnecessary cruelty. Oh, fuck her. Are you serious? I'm not going to listen to a thing she says. She's too head over heels for that stupid butler guy. I intend to cause carnage and blood forever. I am the real endless witch. Oh, my. So, she did. And after all, there is an etiquette for offering the sacrifices from the fourth twilight onwards. So, thank you, Ji Chan. For that, you must borrow the power of the Seven Sisters of Purgatory. Oh, really? So, yeah, so that's all, man. Now that you imagine it, that's right. Fuck. I can only play as I like with that second Twilight. Son of a bitch! I really wanted to dismember some people. Boring! Just when I thought I could play to my heart's content like I did with Rosa. But that only counts for other kills in the end, right? To Moshimasto. Meaning? What does he get Nando? Dorego no Koroshkata or Shiotomo? Ikikara said it. Come on, Ronova, you forgot the endless witches are black mages and white mages. We can resurrect people. I could just kill them out however I want over and over again, revive them. And then follow the epitaph during the last time I kill them, right? So, in the end, no matter how I play, it isn't a problem. Jeez Louise. Who lacks so well behaved with an entertaining power like this? <laughs> Damn, her freaking machine gun laugh is getting really creepy now. <laughs> her absurd argument was, for an endless witch, an extremely valid one. The etiquette that controlled the manner of killing the sacrifices of the fourth twilight and onward was represented by lines like gouge the head. However, that referred to the way those people died in the end. Oh my god, I just thought of an epic way this is going to end. Oh my god. Is Beatrice going to try to prevent... Is she going to try to prevent the, the final Twilight from happening? Oh my god, because that would be amazing. Is she gonna go full uh, turncoat and stop and stop the ritual and get in a big battle with Evatress? That would be amazing. Seriously, I oh my god, that would be the most epic way to end this episode. Oh my god, now I can't stop thinking about that. However, that referred to those, the way those people died in the end. In other words, in the process leading up to that, she was free to tease and kill them however she wanted. She just had to keep on reviving them and follow the rules only when she killed them the final time. The Renove felt that her innocent cruelty was part of her talent as a witch. He was beginning to notice an innately brutal side of her. Hmm. 
Hello, Guppy Force. Welcome to the stream. That would be amazing, Gu Guppy Force. Seriously. Oh my God. The uh, I could see the way he could top it would be if um, Virgilia helped out as well. That would be a two-on-one triple. You know what it would remind me of, Beatrice? A lot of your with that statement, a lot of MP. If the final battle from Overlord Season 1, I could see it happening a lot, a lot like that. Hold on just one second. Oh, sorry. Oh, God, microphone. Oh, you know the last one she's going to want to kill is going to be Battler. And Beatrice is going to protect him because that would be... I, I would love that because that would be so fucking romantic. Oh my god, you you guys. Oh my god. Oh, I can't wait. Oh my god. I really but I'll probably do even better than I would think. I would imagine because I'm... Oh god, did I disconnect the mic? Oh, no, I didn't. Okay. Because, oh my god. That, seriously. Now, now I'm just trying to imagine. It'll probably be even better than what I'm thinking. Because it always is. They do say the apprentices are the most brutal of witches. And now I see this may be true. Do as you wish, is what I would like to say. Exactly, Ji-chan. Exactly! But here, it may actually be wiser to show restraint. They have guns. Weapons with high anti magic power, such as guns, are the natural enemies of witches and demons. Haven't you ever played fucking Doom? It was just one fucking guy with about 50 guns, went through hell, and killed every single fucking demon. I take that rather personally. Oh my god, Jishan, your head cannon is driving me insane! I really hope that happens! Oh my god, 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 oh my god! I have to see what happens! The witch stared blankly at this demon butler, who was surprisingly afraid of guns. That can't be right. Shouldn't witches be able to take a shot from a bullet easily? I mean, come on, didn't Beatrice do that in episode fucking one with Natsuki? Yeah. No. It would be just as fatal for a witch. As it would be for a normal human. To prevent that weak point from being noticed, most witches rigorously strengthen their guard with a defense of protective barriers and furniture. Alright, Joy, I'll see you later. Do I have any of those protective barrier things? Things were telling me now, you asshole. Jesus Christ. Constructing a barrier to make even gun bullets ineffective? Requires much in the way of preparation and ceremonies. I'm afraid to say that Beatrice-sama currently has none of those. You currently have zero defense, bitch. Furthermore, you are currently ill-prepared to summon furniture, strong enough to block a bullet. 
これほどの魔力を持つ大魔女になりながらそれでもやはり鉛玉に怯えなければならないのね So even though I become a great witch with this much magical power, I really do have to be afraid of lead fucking bullets! That's annoying, but I do not have a choice, I guess. God damn it, Renova, you gotta tell me this shit but earlier next time. Like, seriously, I almost made an ass out of myself in front of my predecessor, that, that pussy ass bitch. So in that case, should I call some furniture to act as my arms and legs? Yes. Like Living everything to your servants while not exposing yourself to danger is also part of a witch's refined taste. Beatrice Sama, lead this to the furniture and hide in a safe place. I got it. Jeez Louise. My con seventh sister to purgatory. Don't care who, any two. Bigaboo and Bugaba, whatever. Leviathan and Belphegor responded to the call. Leviathan and Envy right here. Taida no Belphegor, Kokoni. Belphegor of Sloth right here. Antatachi no Chikara o misete morao wa? Show me your power. Kyoteki wa Rudolf to Kirie. Your targets are Rudolf and Kirie. Hideyoshi wa dame yo. Don't attack Hideyoshi. I made a fucking promise. So? Come on! Show me just how cruel you can be, furniture! My apologies. But we've received orders from the predecessor Sama to refrain from unnecessarily cruel actions. God fucking damn it! That bitch is starting to piss me off! But, I think the predecessor Sama's order does give us some leeway to tease them. Do you still want to go through with it? I got it. I'll compromise. I'll be a good person. Don't let them die easily. Thoroughly corner them and let them taste the fear of death before killing them. Will that be okay, Renove? Hi. Yes, depending on the degree, I do not believe there will be a problem. Then go! Get out of my face! Yes, leave it to us. Yes, leave it to us. Your opponents are armed with guns. For those, such... For those such as you, dodging them should be easy. But if you were hit, the wound would be fatal. Proceed with an appropriate level of caution. Don't worry. We aren't that incompetent. The two sisters of Purgatory vanished. Renove bowed and vanished himself. There are even rules on how to kill them! 
Yep, they're gonna come into conflict. Why do I have to be constrained by my predecessor, Sama? It's so rigid and boring! As the witch looked up at the portrait of the predecessor Beatrice, hug in the hall, she cursed. Oh my god, I think I see this coming. I think they're gonna get into a fight. Oh my god. That would be an epic as shit way to end this chapter. The three people had already arrived at the kitchen and were gathering food supplies. Considering the possibility of poison, they gave up on the alluring fruits and vegetables and gathered a whole cardboard box full of only the safe canned foods. It was very heavy, but by piling it on the card, they could carry it as well as Valentine. This should be more than enough for ten people to hold out until tomorrow's breakfast. That should carry them until the boat arrives. The two men were supposed to be focused solely on guard duty, but the weight of the load was tough on Kiria even with the cart. Hideyoshi, who wanted to show off his power, switched to the cart pusher, and Rudolph and his wife took up the task of guard duty. <laughs> Oh my god, James, I'm gonna have to read that out loud. That is too great. Beatrice says, Fuck Beatrice! Battler says, Is that a command? Beatrice says, I hate all of you people, I fucking swear. Oh my god, that was great, James. With all of this, even George and the kids will be full. The trip back will be a picnic, so let's go! When Hideyoshi vigor vigorously announced their departure, Kirie frowned and seemed to be gazing into the distance. There was a wall in that direction. No, if her gaze could go through that, there was the main hall beyond it. Doshita. What is it, Kiri? It's vague. But I've got a bad feeling gnawing at me. Like we're all gonna die horribly soon in a couple of minutes. Kiri stopped walking and narrowed her eyes even further. Woman's intuition. At times like this, Kiri's intuition often rang true even when she didn't have a logical reason. Rudolph believed in that intuition. <sighs> yes. I gotta say, even though Battler doesn't like Rudolph, I don't know, I think Rudolph's pretty cool. He's not, like, he's not like Krauss. You know, I think, like, like, Rudolph and, uh, Kitty are really cool, I think. Tabu. Someone's probably waiting to ambush us. I didn't sense him before. But just now, I felt it. Just now, someone set up an ambush for us. Then there's no reason to go back the way we came! There's a back door over there, right? So do. Let's leave that way. Rudolph made to unlock the back door. When goods were carried into the kitchen, that you know what? Yeah, Jishan, I'll reserve full judgment because we don't know exactly what happened between uh, Rudolph and Battler's mom. 
completely. We don't know the full story. That's probably going to be explored later on. When goods were carried into the kitchen, they never passed through the part of the mansion that the family came and went from. So outside the back door, there was probably a ramp used to carry things in. Surely they would be able to leave through there with the cart. What the heck? It's stuck. Damn, what's going on? Can you open it? Nope. Is it broken or something? It isn't given an inch. Rudolph tried various things, first using force, then coaxing it. But the lock was hard as stone and didn't even budge. Muri Sento! Don't force it. Let's leave through the front entrance. Hello, Happy D. Welcome to the stream. Right now, it'll be even worse if we stand around wasting time. Ugh. <laughs> <sighs> You think this is a trap? I don't know. Be careful. With strained expressions, the three of them returned to the hall again and headed for the entrance. Who, who is it? The instant they exited into the hall, Rudolph noticed a suspicious shadow right in front of them and yelled. In that instant, a storm of gold leaves started blowing, and gold butterflies covered the area with a gold color. Gold, 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 gold. Jeez. I can't believe it. A lowly human predicted our ambush. It is my fault. I was hiding my presence. Jeez. Don't hesitate! Fire! The two guns sprouted fire. The lead bullets blasted right through the magical defense of the pair as easily as there was a wet paper wall. But the two figures that should have been there had disappeared. Certainly guns were frightening objects for them. But there was no need to fear as long as they weren't hit. They at least had enough speed to dodge those. Wait a sec! You won't even give us a chance to say our names! This is why I hate humans! The Vibe was a full 10 meters from where she had supposedly been, popping her head out from behind the pillars in the shadow of the staircase and protesting. In accordance with Beatrice Sama's orders, we will hunt you down. Our orders tell us to make it some time take some time and tease you. You're free to resist, but know that it will be useless. The voice came from overhead. Balfagor could be seen on the top of the hall chandelier. Elegantly looking down upon them, she proclaimed their execution with a cruel smile. Who, who are these girls? Forget the card. We have two opponents, so if we split up, they can't chase all of us. All three of them were well acquainted with the inside of the mansion. In the case of a crisis, they had planned to run off in separate directions returning to the guest house by breaking windows or leaving through a back door. Biting was forbidden. As long as they could fully escape. <laughs> In a tight spot, escaping is victory. So only Hideyoshi is going to make it back then. 
The three of them ran into the depths of the mansion at full tilt. The pair of furniture calmly watched them go. I'll kill the woman. You take the man. Understood. The furniture in the shadows of the pillars and on the chandelier made their figures explode. And leaving behind only the sound of a hopping beetle knocking against the wall, they pursued their respective targets. Their speed was overwhelming, and they easily blocked the other's paths of retreat. Let's see what this furniture's got. I hope they're at least able to amuse me. Beatrice-sama, it may not be prudent for you to reveal your form unnecessarily. And you don't unnecessarily move your king away from the center. That's part of a monarch's and a witch's dignity. Belfagor was already blocking the way in front of Rudolph, who had boldly tried to escape to the second floor. It's useless to try and resist or escape. You don't need to think about anything. Just close your eyes. I'll gently end it all for you. <laughs> You'd make a good wife! Oh, come on, Rudolph! <laughs> now is not the time! Jeez. Husbands love to hear that kind of thing when they come home all tired. And you can hear Kitty in the distance like, Rudolph, you son of a bitch, are you fucking serious? At a time like this, when we're about to die, I gotta slap your face off, boy! And I was like, oh boy. To think that you're still relaxed enough to speak with such insolence at a time like this. Beatrice Sama, thanks for this excellent prey. Die! Rudolph shot first. Oh man, they did their specialty, the uh, nothing personnel kid. Uh, yeah, that's the specialty of the, of the Seven Sisters. And Cannon. But even before the bullet could hit her, Belfagor had already moved behind Rudolph's back. She raised a purple curve springing out from her arm. However, incredibly, before that arm could decap decapitate Rudolph, he had swung his gun behind him. Holy shit. The barrel remained pointing behind his back from the same motion which, which he had reloaded the sawed-off gun one-handedly. Holy shit! It was pointing right at Belfagor's chest. Click, ka-chunk. It was the sound of the ejected empty cartridge finally hitting the wall after the reload. Holy shit! In other words, it meant that the next shot was already fully loaded. Without turning aground, his gun pointing right at Belfagor's chest, Rudolph grinned. Not bad. For a middle-aged man. Don't look down on the generation that loves old westerns, okay? You brats don't know anything about the defraudment of lever action. Just like Rudolph, Kire was also confronting a demon stake on the first corridor. What a moron! You could have just escaped with your husband. You do know that was your final farewell just now, right? <laughs> 
Oh, don't worry. Oh, this kind of thing is my husband's specialty. I'm sure he'll come for me on a white horse soon. Oh, that is so sweet! Oh my god. That is so sweet. I really want to see their backstory. I really want to know how they met and everything at work and everything. Because he's never failed to come and save me when I'm in trouble. Not even when Asuma-san was around. Dan, you are right. They are a total power couple. Kirie. Wow. Asumu, I guess that's Battler's mother? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> what a happy couple. I'm jealous. I am Leviathan Envy. Envy itself is my power. My anger. My lifeblood. I agree. Envy is the source of a woman's power. Oh god, did she fucking kill? Oh no. Did she fucking kill Battler's mom? Oh no, Kirie. Did she do it? If not kill, did she do something to Battler's mom? Oh no. Oh no. And if that is power, I will lose to a girl like you. <laughs> oh no. Did she? Oh no. Because for her to be still thinking about Battler's mom in a time like this. Oh no. God damn it, Kirie, I really like you. I hope I hope that's not true, but why would you say something like that? Ugh, unless uh, you had a hand in that. Oh god. Oh no. Imagine saying that to the one who governs Andy. You actually think I'd let you two be reunited? <laughs> I'll give you a tragic farewell! The arm of Leviathan Swan was trailed by a purple curve. It was a magic blade that covered the power of malice. Kirie blocked it with her gun. Interesting. Even though the magic blade should have cut through the metal like butter, the gun, with its, extre its extremely high magic resistance power, was able to block the blade as easily as if it were a rolled up newspaper. Rapidly, two times, three times. It blocked all of them. <laughs> Kirie is badass as I thought. My god. And without missing the opening created when that purple curve took a spring swing upward, Kiria kicked Leviathan in the stomach with her heel. Hello, Ryan. Welcome to the street. My God, Kiria is so badass as I thought she would be. Leviathan was not locked away like a lightning dancing feather. Okay, Oe. See you later. Thank you so much for coming. Before the demon snake's feet touched the ground again. Kirie was already pointing her gun directly at Leviathan in midair. From that position, the two women who were called Envy of Form of Power met each other's gaze. Can, can you do it? Can you pull that trigger? Oh! Wow! God, Kirie, motherfucking queen right here. Holy shit. Oh god, that's Kirie! Oh, wow. I really hope you didn't kill Battler's mom. Because you are so motherfucking awesome. I can be brutal when my husband isn't around. Ah, wow, 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 wow. 
Oh, Rudolph didn't win his battle. Rudolph tumbled down the staircase. He'd been gradually cornered by Belphegor and had been pushed back into the main hall that started from. The predecessor of Sama's turn shares pretty good. They aren't very flashy, though. Beatrice-sama! It isn't over yet, and it's dangerous to show yourself! Yeah, they all recognize Eva as she was as a child. Don't tell me you're... Eva? That used to be my name. But it's different now, Rudolph. You don't have to tell me. You're gonna say you're the golden witch, Beatrice. Right. <laughs> How did you know? I don't understand how he could have possibly. Uh, how? Did he really think Eva was faking sick or something? And did, how could he think this is the same Eva? I don't get it. Uh, wait. Since the time Rosa was killed, I had a big idea. Rosa. Rosa, forgive me. Oh, that's a badass line. Forgive me for sending the sister you hated down to the hell you're in! Beatrice-sama, look out! Rudolph mercilessly pointed the barrel of his gun at the witch who claimed to have once been his sister. But Belphegor would not permit that and attack savagely. She dashed, disappeared, and headed for Rudolph's back. She dodged the shot again and headed for Rudolph's back. And vanished over and over, instantly moving into Rudolph's blind spots. It's almost like she was a fairy. As she blinked in and out of vision, Belphegor incessantly drove towards Rudolph. Maybe this is kind of fun! Rudolph, let me sit back and watch, see how long your brave efforts last you. At that time, there was a dull tearing sound, along with Rudolph's cry of anguish. Rudolph's reaction to the dance of the purple curve that pressed upon him had finally been too slow, and had let it li lightly cut his flank. That single wound slowed him down just once. That led to a new wound, which slowed his actions again. Oh, hello, Zia-san! Welcome to the streams! I'm so glad you could catch it live. Belphegor's dance began to swallow Rudolph whole. Watching Rudolph's body gradually get carved up, his former sister let out a shrill laugh. <laughs> Leviathan could no longer hide her irritation. That Kide hadn't su suffered a single fatal wound. How did she survive that gunshot? I really am a moron. 
いつも一番成長が遅かったの Among the seven sisters, I was always the slowest to grow. I, I was always slow, always weak, always stupid. That inferiority complex became envy. And when I convert that into power, I gain a strength greater than any of the sisters. It's important for young girls to have a moderate inferiority complex. It teaches women about cosmetics and hard work. Oh, she's gonna go sicko mode on her. Oh, well. I don't like having to use the limits of my power against mere humans. But I can turn my envy of your ability to trust completely into your husband into power. I don't like it. Why? Goddamn pauses. Why is it relaxed when you're fighting for your life? <laughs> I wonder. I get it. You're, you're fully convinced that your husband will come to your rescue and save you. Isn't it incredible that trust of yours is enough to make me jealous? What kind of trust did we sisters have for each other? The sisters are always looking down on each other, trying to thoroughly lambast each other when things already look bad. I've always been bullied by my sisters. I've always wanted just one person to take my side. So when I see you with a single ally who's completely trustworthy, I feel the strongest envy. Goddamn pauses, I'm so sorry. Ah, uh, that confident expression. An utter belief in your husband. I can feel it giving me power. I might even surpass that. The speed of sound! Jesus Christ. Leviathan turned herself into a stake, and the speed of her flight as she attacked was proportional to the strength of her envy. Since the day my sisters looked down on me, I was jealous from the bottom of my heart of the other six, who grew quickly. I was jealous for seven days and seven nights. You can see the power I gained as a result in my speed. Die, Ushimiya Kirie! The demon stake exposed her true form, leaving about at a terrible speed. The noise from her bouncing off the wall sounded like a machine gun. By now, Kirie couldn't pot tell if it was a single stake or a swarm of beetles flying and bouncing around. Chi-chan, you're too nice to me. You're way too nice. Leviathan was over 100% certain of her victory, believing it from the bottom of her heart. Then, Kirie spoke with an unbelievably calm voice. Kirie is just you too powerful. Oh no! Oh no! She did, didn't she? 
She killed Vatler's mom. Or did something to her. Oh no. Oh, I was the one who went out with Rudolph's son first. Oh no, I don't like where this train of thought is going. Asumu-san? Blatantly cut in between us. And truly got pregnant. Oh my god. Oh no. So she must resent Battler in some at some level too. Oh no. I don't blame Rudolph son. Hello, apparition. That woman used her body as a weapon to seduce him and then acted even more repulsively. Oh no, Kirie! You were so cool! Come on! Don't do this to me, Kirie! Connor and Rudolph son and forcing him to get engaged to her! Asumu son even carrying Battler Coon! <gasps> oh my god! What? What? Does Battler have a half brother? Are there really two Battlers? Wait, what? Oh my god! Asumu san had been carrying Battler Coon! And at the same time, I was also carrying a boy. Oh my god! As fate would have it, our delivery dates were on the same goddamn day! Then, Asumu song gave birth to Battler Coon! Oh no! Oh, so she had a miscarriage. But I had a miscarriage. I think about it sometimes! What if Asumu-san had had the miscarriage? And I had been the one to give birth! What? But Rudolph-san had broken off his engagement and married me! But I couldn't give birth to my child. So until Asumu san died. That's right, Battler's little sister. I completely forgot about her. Until I got pregnant with Angie. I cursed Asumu san and was jealous. Asumu san let Asumu san die. Then, I wanted to marry me. In my envy, I kept cursing like that over and over until Asumu san finally died. I was certain. I was certain that I'd use the power of magic to curse and kill Asumu-san! But that didn't quail the flames of my envy. Don't tell anyone. Okay, sugar? Every time I look at Batlacoon, I remember that woman! Every time I look at him, I think that if only my child had been born, he would be the same age! I'm, I'm still jealous of her, tormented by her! Even now, 
And from now on, into the future, and for all eternity. Damn, Kirie is giving one of those. Oh my God, she's she's giving a freaking uh, badass speech here. You say you were jealous of your sisters for seven days and seven nights. Th that's right. Oh god, I'm totally fucked. <laughs> Don't make me laugh, little girl! Oh my god! How could you understand the madness of a woman whose man was stolen from her and who burned with ember for 18 years? Sugar! <laughs> oh my god. If Leviathan. Yep, yeah, she's a fucking Yandere, my favorite trope of all time. Oh my god. Ryu, I th I'm feeling that Ryukushi loves the Yandere trope as much as I do. Oh my god. Yes! Whoa, this is amazing! If Leviathan had the powers of 24 hours, like 7 days, 168 hours of speed, then the power that Kiri had piled up was 24 hours in one day, 365 days in one year, and 18 whole motherfucking years. Even without counting leap years, that was... That was 157,680 hours. Compared to Leviathan's power and speed, it was more than 938 times greater. So that even if Leviathan could soar at the speed of sound, 1,225 kilometers an hour, to Kiria's eyes, it only looked like 1 938th of that. Which means, which means, 1,225 divided by 938 is a speed up. 1.3 kilometers an hour. They say a human's walking speed is 4 kilometers an hour. So it's even less than half of that. That is almost the same speed as a baby crawling on the floor. Which means, which means, which means, Kide is going to be the first one to take out one of the seven sisters. Unbelievable. It's going to be Kirie. In the time it took the demon stake to move at a pace so slow that you count all the bits of dust floating in the air, Kirie looked at it with pity. She pitied the slowness at which it came towards her. Then she lazily raised the barrel of her gun. Almost as though she was trying to swallow the demon stake up with the gun barrel. You're completely lacking in both romance and envy, sugar! Try out next time, little girl. Damn, Kirie! Oh my god. She is so badass. Rudolph, what happened to all that vigor from a couple of seconds ago? You're supposed to slice up a fish so it's still flopping around. After it dies, it isn't interesting anymore. That's enough! Why not kill you now? Oh my god, James, that was such an amazing scene! Kirie! Motherfucking Kirie using the power of Yandere was the first one to kill one of the seven stakes. Unbelievable. Unfucking believable. Ugh. Damn it! I'm surprised you managed to endure this long after being carved up. 
もう十分だ。That's enough. あとは何も考えなくてよい。From now on, you don't need to think about anything. 痛みなく生を奪い去って。I'll steal away your life painlessly. 待ってくれ。頼みがある。Wait! There's a favor I want to ask! 最後に、あれがやってみて。At the very end, I want to do one of those. あれとは何か That's true, Cannon was the first to defeat, but he didn't kill. That's true, Doi. Cannon was the first to beat one. What do you mean, one of those? You know who that thing is seeing all the westerns? We start with our backs together, walk three steps, and then bang! Ah, <laughs>、uh, a duel. Yokaro. Very well. So, then you take on Jono Miranga Skirna. Look at it. If that'll satisfy your regrets in this world, I'll accept. Rudolph moved, moved his wound covered body and turned his back to her. b e l f a g o r responded and turned it back to his. b e l f a g o r had an honest nature that was uncommon in a witch's furniture. Let me warn you. I'm so sorry, Voodoo Chili. Welcome to the stream. Even if you press the barrel of your gun between my eyebrows. I can move instantaneously, even faster than you could pull the trigger, and have the bullet reach my skull. Yeah, I can feel that already. You're faster than a bullet. You're faster than a bullet. You're faster than a bullet. I've agreed to this out of respect for your courage and challenged me to a duel despite that knowledge. Thank me. Well, you're an honest and principled person. And a good woman. You might just steal my heart away, but then my crazy ass psycho wife is gonna. Fucking shoot you up. Let's begin. Three steps will do fine, yes? First, one step. Two steps. Three steps. Is that okay? Yep, she probably is. Yep. And since you still haven't noticed after walking three old steps, it's my victory, miss. What? <laughs> Rudolph turned around and fired a bullet. However, b e l f a g o r could easily see through the speed and tra trajectory of a bullet like that. It should have been no problem at all to dodge it. But a spray of flesh, fresh blood blew about. b e l f a g o r had set up an adequate magical defensive barrier, but for an incantation of anti magic power such as that bullet, it was completely meaningless. How? What are you doing? Why'd you get hit? The bullet had hit b e l f a g o r right in the chest. The pain from the lead caused her to grimace, as did the pain from the denial of magic. Forgive me. I'm a coward of a man. What a killjoy. To think that the furniture of a witch could be defeated by a human. 
No, you are shame! Worthless, pathetic! If only you just gravel and die! Quit it, Aneki! She could have dodged it, but she didn't. She realized that you were in the line of fire, Aneki. So this faithful girl took it without doubt and protecting you. At the very end, she saw that I was pinning the broken the king. Oh my god. Wow. Jeez. Spectacular. Don't eat me forward. I plan to resign if you noticed it while you were taking those three steps. You added those three steps out of consideration for me, didn't you? I didn't even try to think about it. I was lazy. Two of the seven deadly sins are down. Oh my god. You were a good woman. Go to heaven before me and get yourself all made up. I'll definitely come and check you up. Kitty is gonna come in and go psycho on us. Oh my god, Kitty. Holy shit. As Belphegor slowly fell over, she lost the power that even kept her in human form, and she grew small like gold dust, melting into thin air. At that point, Kitty dashed in. It seemed that she had somehow defeated her pursuer by her own hands. As she pointed her barrel at the gun straight at the witch, she ran up to the wound-covered Rudolph. Are you okay, sugar? Were you chatting someone up just now? Yep, good woman. No match for you, of course. Sorry, Haneki. It's checkmate. Damn, Batley's parents are badass. Holy shit. Jesus Christ. The two of them pinned the witch down with the barrels of their guns. Worthless furniture! To think they'd be beaten by human opponents. Worthless! Stupid! Boring! Holy shit, damn. Beatrice Saba, we should retreat for now. Maybe if we had just gone after the defenseless adults that were inside the friggin' guest house, this wouldn't have happened. There is no furniture or barrier to guard against bullets here. You are totally gonna be fucked. This would have, surely, your predecessor would have thought of a, a way to get around this. What did you say? I merely stated that she would have had a way around this. Huh? Don't you dare compare me to her. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Damn, super psycho expression here. <laughs> the witch began to let out a muffled laugh. It surprised not only Rudolph and Kitty, but Ronove as well. Because a situation like this, with two guns pointed at her, Hello Marin, welcome to the stream, was not one that even a witch could just laugh off. Hello Fate! 
Welcome to the stream. A lot of new people today. That is so cool. I love it when it gets all really nice and like this. But the witch laughed with pleasure. So, yeah. Is she going to introduce a new furniture? Well, it's only natural that Princess Osama's worn out bullshit furniture couldn't do it. I need to get new furniture that's suitable for me. I use them out of obligation. But I've always hated secondhand trash. As she said that, she looked down at Belphegor's remains, which had already finished turning into a pile of gold dust with disgust. I don't know what you're talking about. Be a good girl and put your hands up. Then, the witch obediently raised her hands. But instead of raising her hands because a gun was being pointed at her, it looked more like she was a conductor facing an orchestra, waving her conductor's baton. I think I know what this seat is going to look like. <laughs> Can't arise, furniture suitable for me! Not that cheap ass bullshit IKEA crap! Much stronger ones! Cool ones! Yamete! <laughs> <laughs> Stop this bizarre air. I'll pull the trigger. New furniture? Who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? In response to the witch's call, the hall was once again buried with the color of gold as the brilliantly radiated gold butterflies danced. It felt as though they were being sucked into an ocean of gold leaf. Renove was shocked at the upsurge of magical power. After all, it far surpassed that of his former master. Oh my god. We are absolutely, absolutely headed for a conflict between them. Oh my god. As their eyes were dazzled amidst this golden flash, a gunshot could be heard. Either Rudolf or Kirie had fired around. Then, when the golden flash subsided, at least the witch, at the very least, the witch was standing there, looking cool and, com and composed. The bullet? Kitty must have fired it into her. But the witch had not been hit anywhere on her body. There it is. The bullet had been fastened in midair, right in front of the witch's chest. <gasps> She's using Burncastle's technique! Oh my god! She's doing Burncastle's thing! Oh crap! Oh my god. I think our Beatrice and Virgilia are going to have to work together to beat her. Or maybe Battler can help out since he's very, has a lot of anti magic. Oh god. A bulletproof barrier. In an instant, a barrier that would require a significant amount of preparation, even for the predecessor, had been. Renovi's face was twisted in shock. And the surprises did not end there. Hello, PDI? Are we going to get a new furniture? Two new furnitures. The cloud of gold butterflies had created two humanoid forms. Who are these two? Oh, wow, they look fancy. They look like uh, they're wearing military uniforms. The cloud of gold butterflies had created two humanoid forms. It was a furniture summoning. Oh, they're, they're bunny girls! Oh my god. The butterflies peeled off and flew away, and beneath them, furniture in the shape of girls showed themselves. <sighs> the 
the Chester Sister Corps. Sendai Sama Demo, Oisore to Yobita Senakata, Pendoragon no Kinen Heo, Eton Toyask. Even the predecessor wasn't able to summon Pendragon's memorial troops on a moment's notice and to do it so easily. Chiesta Yoichimar Kokuni Chiaster Four Ten, right here. Chiesta Yonjugo Kokuni. Chester 45, right here. What does he need so I see Kaguna on the show? Aunt Tatua. You two were suitable furniture for me, I take it? A whole lot of Karado Hande to me, Siki Gik Tsimade. I'm reading a picture book out loud to going on a date for shooting down meteorites. We'll take care of everything, me here. Let's run for it. We are totally fucked. We're no match for these ones. Sure! Damn, I can't believe. So we lost two of the seven sisters, but we have these two sisters to worry about now. Oh my god. Kitty had definitely heard warning signs going off in her head. Thanks to the same feeling that it alerted there to the, to the ambush by the seven sisters of purgatory. Without hesitation, they escaped. As the witch elegantly watched them leave, she commanded her new furniture. This is an order. Kill the two who ran away. Then bring the corpses back here. I'll bring him back to life and play with it over and over. <laughs> the witch's expression twisted into an evil smile. Even though she feared that expression, Lucifer appeared and spoke. Oh, oh, uh, forgive my presumption. But the presence of Zama asks that you avoid brutal actions of that sort. Oh god. Is Lucifer going to be killed by now? Oh god. Damn, I think the seven sisters are going to be wheeled down here. When the witch stared at her with those terrifying eyes, Lucifer was struck dumb. She was frustrated. It was so boring, not being able to let her own power and cruelty run wild. This annoying furniture of the predecessor kept telling her to show restraint, bringing her irritation to a peak. Oh god, James, I gotta read that one out loud. Kitty-san, to defeat them, you'll have to put on a bunny outfit! Rudolph-san, I refuse. Just let them kill me. Oh, that was great, James. Oh, it's Lucy for a pie. Long time no see me, huh? How you doing? Let's be together again sometime. You mustn't miss me for time. You'll get in trouble. Oh, uh, let us carry out the great lady Beatrice's order at once! Well, yeah, we are in the job right now, yeah. Wait, what is this? Be. Be. Booted. 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 For. Something booted down. Sis and the last word is system. And there's some upside down words here too. 
I oh, know I think these are Greek letters or something. Booted something to uh something system. Holy shit, is there some technology right here? Yeah, there's Omega, for example. Oh, those are surreal letters? Booted something something system. I can't read the rest of it. So they have technology here too? Is this some advanced future technology? Well, yeah, we are in the job right now, yeah. For time, Roger that. So you get so get to send Jumbi. Preparing for sniper pursuit combat. What is it? Initializing data collection. I know that one. Accumulating terrain data. Accumulating data for firing. Data link with 410. Oh my god, it's a tracking bullet. Oh god. It's that one gun from Perfect Dark. Oh my god. 410, data received. Target, target lock, acquired. Commencing terrain calculation error correction. Formulating fire card. Supplemental control point calculations can be. Data link at 45. 45. Data received. Yes, it's the far side, Doi. Yes, that's it. Checking hazard zone. That's no good. Okay, uh, you guys translated it. Oh, thank you. Initializing collection. Now scanning. Gathering data. Don't shake it. If we screw up now, it won't hit. Now scanning. Gathering data. Don't shake it. If we screw up now, it won't hit. Guidance system version 07. Hilarious. 07. Firing guidance system start up. Good morning. Welcome to the firing guidance system. Formulating firing curve, forming as a Bezier curve. This is filler, so please don't read it, okay? It's random. All this English that I don't really understand sure is cool. Pretty awesome. Oh my god! Firing preparations complete. If we shoot now, it'll hit. Assuming the measurements are correct. Are we really good to go? It's totally automatic. Accuracy. 97.89% A number that will almost certainly hit Okay, thank you guys for that translation. This is incredible Lucifer Chan better get up behind us You'll get roasted by the back blast <sighs> Thanks to their paired measurements, the Chester sisters were able to instantly calculate the terrain throughout the mansion and the coordinates of their targets, as well as the firing courage to, curve to reach them. That's right, their shots could be guided to follow a curved line. No one could escape. Their position guidance used by the seven sisters of Purgatory was nothing more than a cheap knockoff of the ability these two held. Forty-five! Climbing preparations concluded! Operative selected and loaded! Oh, apparition! Oh, that's sweet! As the two of them faced each other, it was as though they were both pulling back a bowstring together. Oh god. <laughs> Jeez.
A dazzling gold arrow was ready there. Four chan. Five After giving that announcement, they released a single arrow together. As the path taken by the golden sparkling snake of light drew a curve, it followed the direction that Rudolph and Cudier had escaped into in rapid pursuit. If it, turned, it turned through the corridors, crawled over the floor, chasing them as it drew a beautiful curve. No one could block the guided shots of the Chiester sisters. No one could escape from them, and their strength could pierce all physical and magical defenses. It deals almighty damage, god damn it. It was quite a merciless guided weapon of certain death. Thank you, Ruka. However, among mythical class soldiers, it was a weapon used by pretty much everyone. It was very commonplace for them, and very extraordinary for those of the everyday world. What the? When he noticed something rapidly chasing them and turned around, the exact position of Rudolph's heart was pierced by the gold snake. It looks like it does, James. Yeah, I saw it like there was a shadow of the text behind that. But it looks like it passed. It all happened in an instant. Rudolph saw it? As the gold snake after the gold snake pierced Rudolph, it swooped down to the floor, drawing a beautiful spiral, coiled itself around Kide's legs, and crawled up to her chest. Damn, this is like... The Gauntlet Knight technology. Holy shit, jeez. And just like Rudolph, it pierced the exact location of her heart. And all of that happened in an instant. It pierced Rudolph and then Kirie. So they died, dropped to their knees, and fell over at almost the exact same time. What's that? Talk about overwhelming! Ah! Ridiculously easy, isn't it? <laughs> this is the kind of furniture I need! Way different from predecessor Sama's second hand furniture! Come on, bring their corpses here. I'll keep reviving them until I'm bored, and I'll try killing them as a brutal in as brutal a way as I can think of. Oh, to think being a witch could be so much fun. Jesus Christ. Her freaking machine gun laugh. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Jeez. This episode was Eva's show. Eva, Eva Triss's show. All the way. Oh, my God. Taking a life can be so much fun! <laughs> I think I could finally do that. It's basically the Fran Drescher laugh, but higher pitched. Okay. From the time humans are born, the most shunned action they can take is the murder of another human. It's only natural that humans can't understand how pleasurable it can be to break this taboo. But she was no longer a human. She was a witch. and there were some pleasures that only witches could understand. By now, she had tasted those pleasures and was totally immersed in them. After learning the, that the contents of the forbidden pot were honey, she could no longer live without them. No, the contents were honey because they were forbidden. Anyway, by killing humans gruesomely and doing it over and over, she could feel the drug-like pleasure even now. 
As the witch rolled over laughing, the gold snake that had just been shot returned as though being reeled in. At the tips, two people were pinned and dragged along. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. The witch's order had been fulfilled. Rudolph and Kirei had been killed instantly, and their corpses had been carried back. Siesta 45, Online, online, really? Is there an internet? There's no internet in 1986. From babysitting to playing online games with you. Space shuttle to you. To shooting down a space shuttle? We'll take care of everything. Oh god, that's... Jeez, in 1986, it's a good thing it's not really 1986. Jeez. <laughs> it looks like these two are the sacrifices for the fourth and fifth twilights. So in the end, I'll be those worthless seven sisters. Who are they, the five sisters now? I need those guys to pierce and gouge the forehead and the chest. But I can do that at the very end, and I'm free to play in any way I want until then, right? <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. <sighs> Have you already forgotten what I've told you? Come on, Beato. Oh god, this is gonna set up a big conflict, isn't it? I just know it. Oh my god. Oh my god, Beato is gonna have to fight her. Isn't she in the end of this episode? I can sense it. Oh, it's you, predecessor Sama. Do you have any complaints? Of course I do. Oh, you are doing whatever you please, aren't you? Why haven't you followed my directions? What's wrong with doing as I please, predecessor-sama? Anyway, I don't plan on deviating from the rules of the ceremony in the slightest. I'll definitely clean these two corpses up later and drive stakes into their forehead and chest. I'm telling you, that is not the problem. If you act so undignified and cruel, Battler is definitely not going to. I mean. No one will ever want to be your friend, and you'll be lonely and miserable for your entire life. And believe me, as an endless witch, that's a long fucking time. might take it badly. Some people that some other people might be interested in dating. <laughs> uh, you mean your opponent in that game? The one you're supposedly fighting against somewhere? Monave told me. T 
damn that blabbermouth. Well, to be perfectly honest, that's how it is. If you go a little too far, uh, that person will object. You see? Why can't this person just complain to me directly instead of making you take a message? That coward! Well, this is a resident of a different world from yours. There's no choice but to use me as an intermediary. Well, that's besides the point, but... Which means that this person couldn't interact with me even if they wanted to. So why don't you fuck off? And I can't interact with them even if I want to either. Simply put? Is a completely unrelated person from a world that's distant, right? Uh, hmm. uh, indeed. For example, perhaps you could say like these worlds are like very close, parallel lines. The distance between them is quite small, but because the lines are parallel, they will never cross. For now, that should be a convenient way for you to view that world. They never cross? Which means that world has nothing to do with me. If you're speaking for that person when you tell me to show restraint, please pass this message on to them. To them? What should I say? It's not of your badness, so disappear, you old hag! I fucking knew it. If only you just give up and die! Oh, I'm sorry. That message was for you. Uh, I thought that's what she was gonna say. Damn. I, I, get, I do get it wrong. See? She's... Since he was a friend of yours, I just assumed she'd be a woman. My old hag, I'm definitely not talking about you. <coughs> I totally am. <coughs> Processor Sama, so please don't get mad at me. <laughs> When she spoke, the witch was looking straight into Beato's eyes. Anyone present would be able to tell what she meant by it. There's something I find really strange. Why do you have to play a game with someone from another world? And have him accept that you're a witch. Well, as to that... It 
It's because making all humans accept the existence of witches is a prerequisite of pervert control. There was a single holdout who simply wouldn't accept me as a witch. Why would you need the approval of a human? Witches are witches and can use magic. So why should we need to be acknowledged by humans? Well, uh, like I said earlier, magic is... I am a witch. I can use... I can use magic for anyone's approval in particular. So what's your point? In this world, right? However, since that person won't accept it, um, uh, how should I explain it? I don't need you to. After all, isn't this about a different world that never crosses this one? In other words, that world might as well not exist. So is Beatrice like... It's interesting. She's traveling between the worlds, but Eva, I think it's interesting that Eva Trist doesn't realize that the worlds have to be connected in some way because Beatrice is traveling between them. You fighting a game in another world is absolutely no different from you telling me about stuff in your imagination. I'll say it again. It has nothing to do with me. And I am already a witch. Predecessor-sama? Somehow or another. It seems like you can't become a witch as long as this person doesn't acknowledge you. But I'm different. Even though no one has acknowledged me, I'm an excellent witch already. Since you are my predecessor, I will formally pay you respect. But get in my way again, and you're dead. But that's out of kindness, not out of duty. I won't ask for your advice anymore. Because I clearly know what I should do and how I should play from now on. So I will carry out the murder of 13 people as a final act of respect for you. However, there is absolutely no reason for you to interfere with the methods I use. Or what I do afterwards. Therefore, I'll be counting on you in that regard. At a glance, those words seemed obedient, but they contained within them a clear parting of ways. She was no longer under Beto's care in any way. 
That's why she was clearly saying nothing more than, Don't get in the way of my fun. Beato understood that and was dejected, realizing that no matter how she explained it, she wouldn't be able to make the witch understand. I... I see. Then it is no longer my problem. Go on and learn with your own body how magic ceases to exist when you lose your respect for it. I wish you'd tell me where the respect was in that carefree rampage of yours up until now. Hello, T. Oh, wow. This is Beato's chapter. She is... This is her start of her freaking redemption arc, it looks like. After hearing that, Beato could not respond because she remembered hearing exactly the same thing from her teacher. Okay now, she asked her sisters. Oh my god. See off my predecessor on your way back. I have a feeling how the fight is gonna go. Um, that they're gonna get distracted for a while, but Evatrice will be way too strong, but there's gonna be some catch, and Evatrice is gonna lose all her power. Because she didn't do the ritual properly or something like that. And um, I think Battler is going to be a key part of this battle. The final battle in the end. I think that's what's going to happen. Throughout her body, Bea felt, Beato felt something unseeable from the Chiesta sisters, which could, which could only be described as an oppressive sensation. Most likely, they were initiating firing calculations. It was an action must, much like taking out a gun and cocking it. Even Beto could not escape from the Chiesta sisters' attacks without any preparation. In the past, she had placed her greatest trust in them, so she knew how terrifying they were down to her very soul. So she had used them in the past. Predecessor Sama, if you would retire. I would not recommend damaging Beatrice Sama's mood any further. Sendai Sama. Predecessor Sama. I. I understand. I shall leave for now. I'll watch over the end you eventually reach at my leisure. It was almost infinitely close to a parting shot. So after Beato vanished, the witch and her furniture doubled over laughing. I agree, I agree about that, Joy. Yeah. Renova and Lucifer seem to be uh, our spies at the, in the enemy group. I exactly agree with that. Yeah. Well, I do understand. The endless power is fun. The joy of freely touring with an extremely limited life cannot be explained to those who have not tasted it. I can understand that feeling 
of being possessed with the pleasure similar to drugs. It must have been quite fun. Judging by your antics in the past. Damn, this is so amazing. Are you saying? It's just like when you tried to admonish me in the past, over and over, and I did not listen? Why have you tried to scold that? Started to trying to scold that child for our actions? Uh, uh, well, PDI, you mean the end of this scene where they're talking? Is a good stopping point? Is that what you mean, PDI? There's a single large difference between you and that child. That child may already be a witch. Of course, you are also a witch. At least, in this world on top of the game board. Exactly! That's her big weakness. She's confined to this dimension. However, to be acknowledged as a witch in the world outside the game board. You need to have Bat Lacoon, your opponent in this game, acknowledge you. You must have understood that when you started the game. I thought that if I could show off a whirlwind of proof that I'm a witch. Blow away his desire to deny me and make him surrender. He would acknowledge me as a witch. It all went my way last time, so I thought it was just a breath away. It's actually the opposite. Battle King was disgusted by your brutality. He did not step up to the plate as a player because he acknowledged you as a worthy opponent. It was based on a strong animosity. His resolve to completely deny the existence of a brutal witch. In your foolishness, you probably felt that Battle Coon's acceptance of his role as your opponent was the first step. Towards making him acknowledge you as a witch. However, it was actually the opposite. Batlakun challenged you in this game because he was absolutely determined not to acknowledge you. No matter how hard the thoughtless north wind blows, the traveler only wears his cloak even tighter. You were committing a huge error from the very beginning. This game is not torture to make Batlakun surrender. It is a test in which you must try to make Batlakun accept you. <laughs> I vaguely noticed that. The lost game was a tough one for Battler. 
But as it seems, you've already noticed. This game is a tough one for you. What should I do from now on? Think about it for yourself. Fortunately, you have already given up your pieces on the game board to the new witch. You should have plenty of time to reflect upon your own self. <laughs> but Butler is already a massive hostility to me! This is so adorable. He won't accept witches, so he won't accept me. In that case, what can I make him do to make him accept me? Oh my god! 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 Are you saying that if the north wind doesn't work, then I should shine in him as the sun from now on? Me, after all this time. It's October now. Halloween season. It's the month of rebirth when the sun dies and is revived again. When the sun is weak right after reviving. It may not reach far through the cold winter winds. However, it slowly grows and is eventually able to hail the coming of spring. At that time, the traveler may even fold up his cloak. Are you saying that I've been mistaken? Okay, there we go. I think this is a good place to stop. Okay. You're right. It's, it's actually Halloween right now in Australia. It just turned Halloween. Uh, for me at least. Oh my god. This was amazing! Oh my god, I just... Oh my god. Seriously, this is incredible. So now she's gonna be really nice to Battler and it's... Oh my god. I just... I, oh, oh, I have new profiles. Excuse me. Okay. Oh, continue a bit more? Should I continue a bit more? Yo, oh, Zia san? Oh, you'd like to do that? Uh, maybe someday, sure. Um, yeah, sure. Absolutely. You know what? I'd love to. The next scene should be about 20 minutes. Okay. You want me to keep going, uh, Doi? For, I, I, I could keep going. But I want to read these profiles right now. I want to... They have the Iceland flag. I think that is. Okay. Chester 410. A weapon in contract with Beatrice. Fortan is a, ki a kid with a strong personality, whose peculiar style of speech tends to make light of people. 
She likes laughing at people who are serious or can never relax. Which is why she's fond of 45 and Lucifer. Her choice of words may be coarse, but she loves company and gets lonely easily. She gets depressed if there isn't someone talking with her constantly. 410 is particularly skilled when it comes to firing con control, and she can wield unparalleled combative force, even in close-range fighting. Uh, you know what? I don't think I even checked out Eva Beatrice's profile. Eva Beatrice solved the riddle of the witch's epitaph and was welcomed as the new endless witch. She was gifted with an aptitude for magic and is expected to grow into an extraordinary great witch. The genius of a witch often overindulged in her own power during her younger days. Such are the trials only geniuses may endure, and if she proves successful, her name will surely be engraved in the history of endless witches. Will she be able to overcome the trials for that forced her predecessor to surrender? Here we go, Chester 45. A weapon in contract with Beatrice. 45 has a methodical and timid personality, as well as a very strong per persecution complex. Thanks to that, she's well suited to shoring up the weaknesses of 410's rough personality when they work as a pair. She can't stand silence, so she'll often become emotionally insecure if she isn't being ordered around by someone constantly. 45 excels in search and decision-making capabilities. The support she provides doubles the co combative force of the sisters. Are we going to have, like, um, executed profiles for them? Nope. Okay, so we don't have special uh, executed profiles. And of course, uh, Rudolph and Kitie. Uh So yeah. Natsuhi, uh, Kraus, and Nanjo, their days are pretty numbered, I'd say. And I think that, you know what? I really think that in the end, it's going to be about Beatrice protecting this battler. She's gonna, that's what I, I think she's going to do. I think she's going to fight um, Evatrice to protect this battler. This is so epic. Okay, so do you think this scene goes for about 20 more minutes, Ruka? Oh, um, by the way, uh, Zia-san? If you're part of the Discord, you can find out a bit more. So do you think I should do this next scene? You think it's about 20 more minutes? Okay, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna do it because I am wide awake. So yeah, the beautiful hall of the Ushermia Mansion was covered with a golden sparkle like gold leaf, and stained deep red with thick spurts of blood. If you want to, Zia-san, if any questions you want to ask me, uh, you can put in my channel on the Discord because there's a lot of uh, channels on that Discord for a lot of people doing uh, Umineko. I'm totally good, Ruka. Thanks. deep red with thick spurts of blood. The number of deaths given to Rudolph and Kirie had long surpassed anything you could count on both your fingers and your toes. The witch was breathing so hard her shoulders shook, but it wasn't because she was tired. She just couldn't hide her ragged breaths 
cause very still uncontainable excitement. Especially not if it was a stuffed animal you liked. But I've always thought about it. I always thought about peeking in. And seeing what was packed inside this fluffy stuffed animal I loved. If you cut it and looked inside, your curiosity might be quelled, but the stuffed animal would be broken. So even though you want to see, you can't. You understand that feeling, right? The power of the endless witch can truly grant that witch. As I am now, I can slice the stuffed animal all I want. And yet, with a bit of magic, I can return it to normal and revive it. In other words, it means I've broken all limitations in this world. As I am now, I don't have to hesitate or give up an idea or anything. That joy! Ah, there's probably no one who can understand it! No one other than me! The Golden Witch! As the witch let out a mad war cry, she revived Rudolph and Kitty again. And faster they can realize it, she killed them right away. And she made it known that something other than cotton was stuffed inside those two. Quit it, Eva! Oh my god, Hideyoshi came back. Oh no. Huh? Ah, huh? Ah, uh, uh, it's you. How long have you been there? In that gruesome hall, Hideyoshi appeared with his gun readied. The witch had sealed the mansion with a barrier, 
So Hideyoshi had nowhere to run. Oh, uh, she forgot to unseal it for him. He probably picked off Rudolph for Kiri's gun and come back. The gun, which should have been something to be feared, was apparently no longer an object she took seriously now that she was overflowing with magical power. Her bold expression didn't flinch in the slightest. Why'd you have to kill Rosa-san and Mario-chan? I'm Rudolph Kun and Kirei-san! Huh? Huh? I'm the head of the Ushirimiya family, the witch of Rokunjima. Everything that occurs on this island is all up to me. Whether they happen to be alive or dead at any particular moment in time is completely meaningless to me. You are mad of the fun and fault. Is the gold... Why is the gold black now? Is it just like a flashback? I guess so. He went mad of the fun and father's gold! Just so high must the gold have been piled! I can't even imagine it. It must have been enough to steal away your sanity! But if there was that much gold! Why didn't you think of graciously splitting it up? You misunderstand. All of that belongs to the Golden Witch. No one is qualified to touch it, except me. <laughs> <laughs> What are you? Don't tell me you're that thing Eva told me about long ago. The witch Eva from when she was young. How the fuck did you get out of her head? That's right. I am the me from my years as a girl. I've been living in the heart of your wife, Ushirumi Eva, this whole time. And I'm a witch. Eva became an adult by forgetting me. So she can't use magic. All kids get their heads, heads filled with innocent but cruel ideas sometimes. Oh, that's right. When I was young, I'd sometimes go around stepping on ants and pulling the wings off of dragonflies. However, I learned the importance of life and graduated from that cruel childhood age. Right now, you really are a child. A personality I knew Eva graduated from. That personality isn't Eva. It's a completely different human! That's right! I'm not Ushirumi Eva! I'm the Golden Witch, Beatrice. It's so fun! Nothing bad 
one of my yarny limitations. I love larger being able to do thy will with life. And damn, it's truly wonderful! I don't have to apologize for bringing a goldfish bowl. Is that something that actually happened? Huh. And I can tear stuffed animals up as much as I want. I. There was a crisp sound. He slapped her, didn't he? It was the sound of Hideyoshi slapping the witch's face. Looking at the hall, stained deep red with flesh, fresh blood, he should have been able to imagine how terrible the witch was. But without fear, without even hesitating, Hideyoshi had walked determinedly up to her and hit her on the cheek. <gasps> you fool! Don't act like a cruel! Then when you're really a coward and a weakling! Again? What does he mean by again? What does he mean by again? What happened? I'll correct that evil nature of yours again, even if I have to! You fool! FOOL! Your woman who understands how important, how fragile a life is, aren't you? I'll make you remember. What you call a witch, you stupid fool! You're my wife. If anything, you're a witch of the kitchen who could always make the perfect snacks out of refrigerated leftovers in a flash. Won't you open your eyes, you fool? Didn't I just tell you? And not show me Eva. You stupid fool! You! You! As tears dripped down his face, Hideyoshi kept hitting the witch's head. Oh god. How in the world did she get out of her head? That's what I want to know. How did she get out of Eva's head and into her own body? Like, ugh. he wasn't even pointing the gun at her anymore. Therefore, the sound of gunfire couldn't have come from the gun Hideyoshi was holding. Someone else came over. So Wait, someone else came and shot. The gun, which had fallen in the corner near Rudolph's corpse, was floating in the air, and smoke lingered near the barrel. And the bullet, a red stain, was slowly... Oh no, well, who shot Hideyoshi? Why would you shoot Hideyoshi? A red stain was slowly spreading across the chest section of Hideyoshi's vest. Was it one of the Chiester sisters? Even though his back was facing the barrel of the gun, the bullet had driven through Hideyoshi's chest. Eva. Oh no. Oh god damn it. Like I said, I'm not Eva! What a stupid, annoying man. Your pain so I'll switch the sacrifice of the Six Twilight to you. If only you'd just hidden under some bed, shaking or something. I plan on letting you go. But no, you went to all the trouble of coming back. You really are a stupid man. 
Oh God. <sighs> Who shot him? Oh God. It had to have been one of the Chiester sisters, right? Or Renove, but I don't think Renove would. Maybe, I don't know. There was a dull sound as Hideyoshi fell to the floor. Even though death would have allowed him to escape from that pain, he resisted until the last second, sorry. And staring straight into the witch's eyes, he passed away. Because he had not died without closing his eyes, the witch didn't realize he was dead for a short while and remained pinned by that gaze. <laughs> Should we make this one a new toy and play? <laughs> At those words, the witch finally realized that Hideyoshi was dead. Uh, uh. <laughs> uh, yeah. Right, what'll we do? That she asked her sisters, waited for instructions. Oh, you're right. Even though he was facing away from the gun, the bullet wound was on his chest. That seems like crazy bullet winding shenanigans that only the Chiester sisters could do. Interesting. Oh, jeez. The Chester sisters waited for instructions. On the inside, they imagined the sorts of even more brutal orders that their master might give. But the expression that rose to the witch's face looked as though she had gotten over her excitement. She looked down at Hideyoshi's face, which still had tears dripping down it. <laughs> Such a killjoy. And it's all this guy's fault. I'm done. Renove, you there? Hi, Kokoni. Yes, right here. Take care of the cleanup. Oh, but the predecessor someone makes a fuss over this one. Please make it clean enough for that old hag to accept. I guess I'll follow the rules of the ceremony. Out of a sense of obligation to my predecessor sama. Treat these three corpses as the fourth through the six twilights. Lucifer, you're up! Lucifer of Pride, right here. Dig into these three corpses and gouge them. It, into corpses? That's right. Got a problem with that? N no. The Seven Sisters of Purgatory had their own sort of pride. It was the pride of a hunter. The pride of gouging pay that, prey that they had brought down themselves. However... Being told to gouge a corpse that someone else had brought down ran contrary to that sentiment. Of course, the witch didn't mean it that way, but for the seven sisters, it was horribly humiliating. However, they had already screwed this up, was two of the sisters defeated, so they had no right to question her. Only Renove appreciated this, and he rested his hand on her shoulder in understanding. Beatrice is this is an order from Beatrice-sama. The real Beatrice-sama. Lucifer, carry these three and dispose of them in accordance with the etiquette of the ceremony. 
Okay. When you're done, lend me a hand with the cleanup. Certainly. The witch looked down upon Hideyoshi's corpse, as though implying that the now delicate atmosphere was all Hideyoshi's fault. Stupid man! And you didn't even have to die. Oh god. And here's the real Eva. Oh god. You know what? Eva? There's a movie that's gonna come out in a couple of decades called Fight Club. I think, um, uh, I'm really sorry about this. If you want to leave George with the location of the gold, I think that might be the only way to stop this. Eva, I'm sorry. She's tied to you. It's just like Tyler Durden. Oh boy. Son of a bitch. <sighs> Eva, at first I didn't like you, and then I really do respect you now, but that's only because you came into conflict conflict with Natsuhi was really was really nice but and the way you treated George but the more I learn about you I feel sorry for you and I empathize I just uh, let George live his life you're doing this because it's what you wanted right can you just let him do what he wants he doesn't have to live your dream I think you should be able to live your own or rather, ugh. Fight Club. Yeah, I think that's... I think Eva's gonna have to Fight Club it. Oh god, I'm so sorry, Eva. There's a few more lines? Oh. There's a few more lines for the chap before the chapter break. Oh god. Dear. She. Oh God! She knew he died. Oh, she doesn't know where he is. Tear. Where are you? You're there, right? Answer me. The crash of a thunderbolt woke Eva from her nightmare. If Hideyoshi had been gripping her hand at that time, her feel for heart would have probably been instantly healed. However, Hideyoshi, who had supposedly sworn that he wouldn't leave even for a moment, was now nowhere to be seen in the room. Dear, answer me, dear! Oh, God. Yeah, oh my God, you're right. She, yeah, she's connected to her, so she probably saw, like, was able to vaguely sense what happened. Oh, God. Hideyoshi was one of the ones that's dead. So now, who's left of the adults? It's just... Oh god, so now it's just uh, Natsuhi and Kraus and Eva. This was a packed episode. Okay. We've gone on for pretty long, I'd say. I think now is the time to save. So damn, we've got jo Hideyoshi dead as well as these two. Who's going to be left? Surely not Eva. It's got to be 
Nanda just might live. Who knows? She only has to kill a couple more people. It might be Natsuhi and Kraus since they're together. <sighs> oh god, yep. A lot happened today. I am kind of, ah, now I'm getting tired. You guys, this was amazing. Oh my god, I love this story so fucking much. All right, in, in two days, we have more Zirconia. And then four days from now, I will continue this, and I cannot wait. I seriously cannot wait. I am going to remember reading this story for the rest of my life, seriously. And I'm definitely going to read it again in the manga form afterward. I just... Wow. Thank you guys so much for joining me. On this, I know it's probably gotten quite, kind of annoying following along with, uh, you know, it reduced to f from every two days to every four days because of Siconia. But once Siconia what is, is done, uh, that'll get back on schedule. Hello, Nagels. And um, then that'll be it. So thank you so much, you guys, for joining me. So until then, two days Siconia, four days more Umineko. I will say... So long, farewell, I'll read to say good night. You are all the sweetest of hearts. See ya.